Imagine KC is a co-production of KCPT and Mid-America Regional Council. The Age Engage episode is made available through the KC Communities for All Ages program, funded by a community agenda, Improving America for All Ages grant, sponsored by the Pfizer Foundation and Grantmakers in Aging, with local funding through the W.J. Brace Charitable Trust, Bank of America trustee. Welcome to another episode of Imagine KC. I'm Randy Mason. In this series, we look at ways that our region is becoming more vibrant, connected, and green. And nothing supports a more vibrant community than one that encourages engagement from all ages, young and old. So we're going to spend the next half hour looking at ways that keep older adults engaged in our communities. We'll check out individuals who found their second act through volunteering, paid work, and other activities. Organizations that have benefited from the expertise of older adult volunteers and strategies to connect willing seniors with meaningful involvement. It's coming up on Imagine KC. America is in the midst of an age boom and Kansas City is no exception. The number of people 65 and older in the Kansas City region is expected to increase by 110% in the next two decades. And this senior population is showing no signs of slowing down. Maybe you're one of them. Many retirees know they have many years ahead of them and want to use all that knowledge and experience in a meaningful way. So some are beginning a second career. Take Pat Brune. After 31 years, she retired from the federal court system in the Western District of Missouri as clerk of court. She describes her role as the equivalent of a CEO in business. During her tenure, she helped design and build three of the five federal courthouses in the district. She was also instrumental in modernizing the courts by introducing the Internet to the federal systems. One of my proudest accomplishments, actually, was being able to convince the judges at that time in 1997, when the Internet was four years old, basically, to try the Internet as a way for attorneys to file cases. And we got involved in a national project in 97. We put our first case on the system in October of 97. Within 10 years, that was the way the entire federal judiciary did their business. Pat retired in 2009, but didn't have a chance to rest on her civic laurels when two friends called with a need for leadership at the YWCA in Kansas City, Kansas. So within seven days of retirement, I found myself interviewing with the board of directors at the YWCA going, I know a lot about government. I don't know a lot about not-for-profits. I have a willing heart. If you think I can help you, let's do that. So 10 days later, I'm doing another nine to five job in a totally different environment, learning how to run a coffee shop and a cafe and a black box theater and girls programming. So it was uh, drinking from a fire hose. Sadly, the economic downturn hit and took down a lot of nonprofits, including the Kansas City, Kansas YWCA, which closed its doors in 2011. When one door closes, another opens. Pat saw a need and began working more closely with other nonprofits in her hometown stomping grounds of Wyandotte County. One of the people that I met there at the, the coffee shop was Karen Hosteller, who's working on, on an initiative called Next Chapter. Next Chapter being built for people like me. What's, what are people going to do who aren't in the regular work world anymore, but aren't ready to go to the rocking chair on the porch? There's a whole bubble of boomers like myself who still have skills that they think are valuable, who want to give back to the community, which is in my heart. Pat began using her skills, leading the Women's Chamber of Commerce, followed by serving on the Advancement Council for the Kansas City Community College, exploring how to advance the efforts of college within the community. She's working on a strategic plan with the Kansas City, Kansas Public Library, all the while starting a nonprofit consulting business with her sister. The consulting has turned into having a particular nonprofit focus since I've learned so much of that so quickly. And I think the thing I bring to that table is the business sense that a lot of nonprofits don't have in the back room. Let me help you with strategic planning, budgeting, you know, 
any administrative work that you've got. Let me help you do that. And when I worked at the court, I had an IT section, 23 guys in IT. And if I had an idea about what I wanted to try, I would talk about it. And within days, I'd have something to play with. I still have those ideas. So coincidentally, I'm teaching myself a lot about web development, web-based, how to work in the social media arena, how not-for-profits can use that same free social media. I won't say I'm a social media expert, but I am going to teach a class on Facebook at the community college later this month. So, Pat is a person who certainly is not ready for the retirement rocking chair, much like her parents. I want to keep learning, but I have excellent role models. My parents are 82 and 83. And until my dad was diagnosed with cancer a year ago, he ran his neighborhood group and he ran a neighborhood organization called the Leavenworth Road Association. My mother worked in public service for 40 years. This is what we do. This is what we know. We, we keep learning. We keep growing. My father's a very happy man today because at 83, he can still mow his own front yard. So we have great role models in the family. Well, finding your second act might not come quite so easily as it did for Pat. So we've invited Karen Hostetler from Next Chapter in Kansas City, Kansas, to give us her tips on how to best imagine a new career in the second half of life. Uh, Karen, it seems maybe strange to some of us that there would even be a need for a Next <laughs> Chapter, but you say just the opposite. People are interested in work for more than one reason. One is, with the potential for longer life now, folks really don't know how much money they may need over those final years of their life. And the second thing is that you have some sense of purpose and meaning in terms of what you'll be doing with your life. And for some people, volunteering can fulfill that, and for others, uh, plugging in in a work capacity is, is, is the way they'd like to go. What, do, what does that look like from maybe that employer standpoint? There's a lot of discussion about soft skills. People who dress appropriately show up for work and show up on time. And uh, those are things that people from a seasoned workforce would, uh, would have done for many, many years. They've been counted on to, to have some ideas in terms of what next steps could be taken, but just how issues can be resolved in a positive way. You can't generalize every single person because they will all bring different kinds of skills and different backgrounds to uh, to this situation. So you actually look into these people's resumes, skill sets, and say, hey, tailor, tailor you know, what you already know, but maybe now take this little extra step that you probably didn't have a chance to do before. In work situations, it's not uncommon that if I'm talking with someone that I would refer them, say, to the Career Center at Kinsey Kansas Community College or uh, Workforce Partnership. Uh, so there are good options within the community, and part of a good next chapter, can, uh, next chapter program is to find ways to build into agencies and structures within our communities programs that can assist folks as they go through this transition. One of the things that we offer through Next Chapter Kansas City are four um, online exploring jobs courses for people. It's a curriculum that's been developed in cooperation with uh, KCK Community College. They are exploring jobs in education, community engagement, and caregiving, and exploring green jobs. And by the end, our goal is that people will have some idea of two or three or four next best steps that they want to take um, in terms of maybe exploring um, a career, a new career or job option. You can find more information on Next Chapter Kansas City as well as other resources for finding your own encore career at our website, imaginekc.org. Well, now we're going to take a look at a local leader with a mission to empower midlife and older adults. Kansas City's Shepherd Center Central connects new retirees to programs, classes, and volunteer opportunities. Now I'm going to go ahead and let you come around to this side of the car before I open the door. Okay, that'll be easier for you because I don't want you to have to struggle getting around oh, the door, okay. okay? In Kansas City alone, 2,002 people per month are turning age 65. And that will continue for the next 18 years. So we have this very large age wave. Our civic and social engagement is around keeping people active, keeping them learning, keeping them engaged in the community. We're all about keeping people in their homes and letting them age in this place for as long as possible. Kansas City's Shepherd Center has been tending to the needs of older populations since 1972. 
here at the central office across from UMKC, as well as other locations around the metro. Everything from the basics, like hundreds of meals on wheels they serve to shut-ins, to adventures in learning classes on topics like how to use your iPhone. But more and more, the volunteers they see coming through their doors bring with them some distinct differences. The folks that are just now retiring have a lot of education, they have a lot of expertise, and while they're ready to retire, most of them, they're not ready to completely stop doing what they're doing. So they want to use that expertise to help nonprofits or other folks in the world. What is wonderful about this group is that they're looking for something meaningful to do. That's who they are. They've always been involved and engaged in social change, economic change, and what this program likes to emphasize is they're also an amazing resource in every community. The Coming of Age program was created 13 years ago at Temple University and over time has grown into a series of interactive four-hour workshops called Explore Your Future, where those over 50 can begin to envision some of the places their encore life might take them. This workbook is how we do that, how we help people determine what it is that's going to be fulfilling and meaningful to them. These workbook pages, and there are dozens of them, are designed to help you figure that out. Many of these folks are going to live a very long time, 10, 20, 30, 40 years after they officially retire. And it really helps people think for themselves. This is not about directing them in any particular direction or forcing someone to say that they want to do a particular thing. The other component of it is the workshop for nonprofit leaders, executive directors, members of boards of directors of nonprofits. It's called Capturing the Energy and Expertise of People 50 Plus. How do you do that? This is a whole new generation. I think a lot of times we're probably guilty of this as well. If, if you hear about a volunteer, for instance, that's been an accountant, you naturally want to bring them in to do accounting type or numbers things. They may not be ready to do that yet. They may be ready just to come in and be. But what we've seen is when they get into the organizations and start to understand how the organization operates, the good that it does in the community, and the needs of that organization, then they're more inclined to offer those services that they have expertise in. You sure you okay? Yeah, I'm okay, fine. okay. All right. As much as nonprofits and charities may stand to benefit from this energetic new labor pool, Sandra Oust wants us to consider the cost of not keeping seniors connected in their communities. That, she says, might be the greatest loss of all. The research is very clear that people who have no hobbies, no interests, nothing to get them up in the morning, once they cease working full time, very often have a tragic trajectory of increases in depression, drug, prescription drug, alcohol abuse, and it becomes a downward spiral of despair. People are really looking to have a plan that's going to be meaningful, significant, is going to give them a chance to find work, whether it's paid or not, that's fulfilling, that's going to make a difference. That's who these boomers are. Whether you need a full-fledged plan or just a place to jump in, there are numerous opportunities to make a difference out there. Area agencies throughout the region offer volunteer opportunities. One such place is Jewish Family Services. We rode along with their Jet Express program that fills a vital need in the lives of both retiree and recipient. I never thought my body would turn into where I need, you know, couldn't drive because what the kids, Nobody my daughter that. took the car away. Okay, I'm Steve Strauss. I am volunteer driver for Jet Express. I'm a retiree. I worked for the post office for 36 years, and this is just one of the things I like to do to help out. Okay, thank you. They really appreciate the fact that somebody is willing to even take them to an appointment, even if it's just a, to the store, I mean, whatever. I take her, uh, Barbara for here for her volunteer work that she does. Otherwise, she couldn't get here. It's not that big a deal as far as getting qualified to do it. I mean, as long as you can drive and you don't have a bunch of accidents or anything like that and you're insured, you know, you just like to 
spend a couple hours, maybe a week or whatever. That's all it takes. My granddaughter was here. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Where, the one, which one? The, the one from Indiana. If I do uh, work with them more than once, like I do with Barbara, you know, I do develop a relationship with them. You know, we talk about family or friends or what's going on in our lives, that kind of thing. And, you know, it's just a little companionship for them, too. All right, well, then I'll see you probably next week, too, I guess. Okay, I hope. Oh. I'll bring my back to uh, yeah. right, thank you. <laughs> We've got Linda Guerra Laura from the Guadalupe Center with us next, uh, a place that's been serving the West Side community for years and years. And I know as an administrator, you've got a term for these people who've just kind of retired recently. And what do you call them? Uh, I call them the junior seniors. Uh, these are people who are newly retirees. They're more uh, outgoing, able-bodied, you know, so still energetic and ready to do whatever. So that's what I call them, the junior seniors. You've got ways to actually put them into play there uh, with, you know, some of these different populations that, that the Guadalupe Center serves. One of the things that I do have, I have a, a wonderful lady. She's very energetic. Um, she is very creative. She is helping us out with a program that we have right now called Memories in the Making. It's um, associated with the Alzheimer's Association mm -hmm. and so she will administer classes for um, watercolor paintings. That's working with one intergenerational sort of population, but I think sometimes it goes to the younger set as well. We've done other programs um, where we have had some of our seniors go to our um, Plaza de Niños, which is our uh, preschool, and they will help them out by reading, you know, reading to them, interact with them, you know, in different ways, playing, you know, singing, whichever. You're about to embark on something that I think is, is pretty cool with, uh, <laughs> with, with a, a little more visibility and, uh, and a lot of uh, upside, it sounds like. And we, yeah, we're looking forward to it. We hope it is. That's our, uh, we just gotten a grant with Walmart and uh, Mid-America Regional Council for a greenhouse project, and that's called uh, Greens for Guadalupe Center. Um, we're excited about it. We're hoping that what we're going to do is actually get some of our seniors to volunteer and help us out with this greenhouse project and actually producing some of the uh, produce in there, you know, getting, growing, whatever they decide. It's it's their greenhouse, pretty much. This is going to be, you know, a, a little bit of a game changer for Guadalupe <laughs> Center and uh, something to look forward to. Definitely. As, as well as more ways to kind of give these recent retirees a little more, you know, active things to do. Exactly. It's not all about bingo, I guess. <laughs> It's not, and that's part of what we're trying to get across here mm -hmm. on, on this edition of Imagine KC. It's great to have you with us, Linda. And we're going to look actually at some more of the ways that gardening and growing things together is having a, a positive impact on people around the metro. Why don't you take a look? Marty Kraft is the garden manager at the Niles Home for Children, a place for at-risk kids on the east side of Kansas City. Marty focuses on helping kids through the power of gardening. All right, just, uh, one of you on one side, one of you on the other. I want to teach kids to garden so they'll be able to feed themselves. We're in a basic food desert here, what they call a food desert. It just means that we're a long way from the store and with people that often don't have cars. So what are you going to eat? You're going to eat the Twinkies at the liquor store. And that's not, that's not acceptable. To show kids that food comes from places other than a store and that they can grow their own food, Marty likes to introduce first-time visitors to snap peas. Well, with the snap peas, you know, I just walk by the, by the vines and I pop one in my mouth and, what are you doing? You eating that? I said, sure, try one. I toss one to him. No, I ain't trying that. And then two or three others will, well, let me try one. Wow, this is good. You know, and then the next trip out, they move immediately to the snap peas and uh, start feeding. <laughs> so, so I've I've won, although they've won, we've all won. The focus is on growing food, but within the confines of the garden, Marty works with kids on issues that transcend gardening. They've been dealt hands that you and I might not believe. So some of them have some anger issues and, okay. and, and some of them have some issues where 
they, they just right. need to learn to focus a little better than than what they ha what they're focusing now. So among the 28 no-till organic beds of vegetables, a pond, a small orchard, and a high tunnel for tomatoes, Marty has created a peaceful place and a place to teach kids life lessons that they can use every day. And I just say, look, you know, slow down, it's all right. And it, we just be gentle with the plant and, and remember that it's a living thing. And, it, you know, and you're, the, the buddy that you're arguing with, he's a living thing too, you know. <laughs> No. And I've seen kids get it together here. And they practically they're unmanageable. And then after plan. being here for six months or so, they're uh, evened out. I was talking to a horticultural therapist, and uh, we came down to the fact that the plants do the work. <laughs> we just get the kids near them. Spend any time with Marty, and it's clear how he loves the peacefulness of the garden and loves working with the kids. And I want them to uh, experience the same kind of things I experience, the peacefulness and the expansiveness that can happen uh, when somebody's responding to nature. Nature is a real opener of the heart, opener of the mind. At 71, Marty says he has no plans to retire. So I feel like I'm still needed and wanted, and I want to do it, so, and still it feeds me, so. There are community gardens all over our region. Some are part of food donation programs. Others simply provide older adults a way to connect with their community. They can help us give back, get engaged, and stay healthy all at the same time. Looking for a garden to give your own green thumb a workout? Well, go to our website, imaginekc.org. We're going to wrap up this episode with yet another example of how seniors can share the wisdom and knowledge they've gained with a younger generation. The Foster Grandparent Program is a program for older adults, 55 and older. We are with Catholic Charities of Northeast Kansas. The National Foster Grandparent Program has been around since August of 1965. We have been here in Wyandotte County since 1976, 37 years. We currently have 104 volunteers working with about a thousand children here in Wyandotte County and they work at 40 schools, Head Starts, and child care facilities. On the Foster Grandparents Program, we have three foster grandparents that come in into our center on a daily basis that um, work in the classroom. Um, they do all the activities that the teachers do with the children. They are just a very essential part to our program. They love their grandparents. So um, a lot of, and Grandma Shirley, a lot of the children have grandmas at home, so they relate very well with her. Um, Grandpa Robert, the kids just look forward to whatever activity he has planned for them or what book he's going to read with them. And Shanice, Grandma Shanice, just does everything in the classroom. So she's such a vital part of our program. Uh, I work with them on their letters, their colors, and writing their name. Just, just a lot of little fun things, working with the kids, so with the Play-Doh, and whatever they're doing, I'm working with them. A little bit of everything, truthfully. We play, read books, serve a meal. Just wherever I'm needed, that's where I am. It's a great, great feeling as a teacher because sometimes our workload is so heavy sometimes and it, it just helps so much to have somebody. Here comes She gives us time to, um, you know, do one-on-one -on -one with the kids. You know, if we ask her to do anything, she's up for any task. She's awesome. We love her. And what you can expect is there's an application process. We do orientation trainings to become a volunteer. It is required that you volunteer 15 hours a week. And um, so as little as 15 hours a week and um, uh, as many as 40 hours a week. The Foster Grandparent Program is an excellent program. I love it. It gives you something to do. You're getting up every day and that's something I look forward to. I just enjoy being here, and I look forward to being here. What's your name? It makes me feel useful. Uh, it keeps me young and active. 
I'm just not ready to sit at home yet. So having the foster grandparents in the classrooms and being involved with us really keeps them engaged in what's going on in the community, what's going on in um, our school. So it opens the doors for them to have something to, to keep them busy throughout the day, but it also allows for our children and families to engage with a population that they may not have any interactions with. So it just um, opens the door for both populations. You know, I think that's just a sense of, of accomplishment, of achievement that, you know, you know that you've worked several, several years of your life and now you get to go out and give back to your community. It's time to go now, so wave. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye. bye, bye. That's the yeah. end of our story today. This show is not nearly long enough for us to share all the various organizations in the Metro that are helping to connect willing and able seniors with meaningful second careers or volunteer opportunities. But of course, you can go to our website, imaginekc.org, where we'll have more information on all the different services mentioned in this episode. Thanks for joining us for Imagine KC. What did you do lettuce and tomato? I've never done lettuce and tomato. Away from that belt of arms. Do you want a magazine to read? Oh, I'll just Imagine KC, the Age Engage episode, is made available through the Community Agenda, Improving America for All Ages Grant, sponsored by the Pfizer Foundation and Grant Makers in Aging, with local funding through the W.J. Brace Charitable Trust, Bank of America Trustee.